Greetings, Game Reactor Nation. I'm Maunus, and I'm Editor-in-Chief here in Game Reactor Denmark. The end of the year is upon us, and that means it's time to talk about Game of the Year. Now, I have a top five right here, and I suggest we just rush through it real quick to see what my five picks of the year is. At the bottom of my list, we find Final Fantasy XV, a game that came out not too long ago, but still managed to sweep me off my feet with its epic JRPG glory. This is a game that's taken 10 years to make, but still, it has that very same charm that is to find in the movies of Hayao Miyazaki, the sweeping epic narrative that spans a lot of time and mixes some really mundane, normal tasks within society with the magical realism. I really love that. And also, the combat, to me, is that perfect mixture of the classic Final Fantasy, really advanced, deep mechanical combat and some more accessible, more light-hearted stuff. Also, and finally, it is a tale between four friends, which I find to be very, very powerful and would recommend it to everyone, not just uh, classic Final Fantasy fans. The fourth game of my list is Firewatch, a game by Campo Santo, first time developers, which received stellar reviews at the beginning of the year. It is a game about Henry, a man due to complications of his life, he moves out in the forest and meets another Firewatch guard, Delilah, with whom he forms a very special relationship. First of all, the game is one of the most beautiful games on the new consoles, thanks to brilliant artwork by artist Ollie Moss. But it's also due to the characters, the way they interact, the way the dialogue works between these two, that really makes it a very memorable experience indeed. What makes me so special? I advise everyone who has a hang for narrative games especially to check this one out. Bursting into my top three is The Division, a game by Massive and Ubisoft, which was surrounded by a layer of controversy when it released this March. That's mostly due to the fact of the graphical downgrade and the initial server problems the game had. But still, I ended up rewarding the game with a 10. A score that was very controversial at the time, but also one that I stand completely by. This is a modern Western RPG with all the trappings and trimmings that Destiny should have had when it launched. It had perfect team-based gameplay, very distinct classes which perform distinctive tasks, and a variety of cool main missions, which took you through a pretty epic narrative, which surrounds exactly why this entire area of New York has been completely ridden with disease. It is a game that presents you with hundreds of hours of great content, and I urge everyone who really likes these sort of games to check it out. The second place on my list is pretty much the exact opposite of the third place, The Division. I'm talking about a tighter, leaner, more artistic experience. I'm of course talking about Inside. The second game from developer Playdead after their initial hit, Limbo. And Inside very much resembles Limbo, but also evolves the concept, takes it one step forward, turns it up a notch. This is a game about mystery, and it's a game about a dystopian world where a small, fragile boy travels through it and sees what has become of modern society. It is a game which not only presents you with very, very tight platforming mechanics and exciting puzzles, but most of all, it tells a story without telling it. It gives you a narrative without completely gift wrapping it to you. In this game, you have to think for yourself. You have to look at the symbolic gestures the game make towards you. And to that end, this mystic, weird experience is one of the most powerful ones I've had all year. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for my personal game of the year 2016. It is a game I gave a 10, and it's a game that I called the very best game I've ever played. I'm of course talking about Uncharted 4, A Thieves' End. Now, I've said a lot of positive things about Uncharted 4 already, and you can find all of those in my review. But to sum up quickly, Uncharted 4 is a culmination of everything Naughty Dog has been up to during the last 10 years. Starting all the way back from Uncharted 1, Drake's Fortune, and all the way up to The Last of Us, 
Uncharted 4 is everything. Everything the developer has learned, every lesson that they've had to take in over the years. And it culminates in this incredible gaming experience, which is unlike anything on the market. I've said it countless times before and I'll say it again. There's nothing like Uncharted 4. And it is one of the best games ever made, if not the best game ever made. I don't think that recommendations comes as glowing as that.